Nope. Welcome back to my channel. Did you know that being healthy isn't all about food and fitness? That it has a lot to do with what's going on up here too. So watch through to the end for some tips as far as like getting like the whole mental thing in order as much as we can. Um, you know, some days are harder than others, but there's definitely things that we can do to take like actionable steps and to achieve mental well-being just as much as we want to like do the whole health and fitness and food and nutrition and exercise and all of that good stuff. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so that you know every time I upload a video. All right, so the first thing is something that I struggle with a lot or I did I struggle with moderately let's say that because it's always going to be a progression um, but something that I'm definitely doing a lot better at now than I used to so thinking negative thoughts about yourself or you know like the people around you or whatever the situation may be for me it was about myself um, to take those negative thoughts and replace them with two or three positive thoughts. So taking away that negative thing and implementing a positive thing. So for me, um, because I didn't start like my fitness journey until I was, you know, I was not an active kid or, you know, I didn't do sports in high school. Um, I was already a mom of three by the time I decided that I needed to get my fitness shit in order. So because I don't have, you know, decades and decades of experience like a lot of other fitness people do, I used to think to myself, you know, who is going to listen to me? And after that, like I realized, you know, I'm like pretty kick-ass smart and I do a lot of research and I do a lot of reading and talking to people and, and things of that nature. So I used to think, why me? And now I think this is why, because I am a rock star. And that's what you have to think about yourself too. So if you're just starting out on like your health journey and you have like, why do I deserve this kind of attitude like I used to, give yourself three positive reasons why you deserve it. And one of being is you opened your eyes this morning, right? You're breathing today, right? Then you deserve to be healthy and you deserve to be happy. The second thing that I do to kind of boost my mental marathon is when I, I have a morning routine and this morning routine, I'm a person, I strive on routine, um, or I strive for a routine, I thrive on a routine. Um, and so my morning thing that I always do is I do my daily devotions before I really kick off the rest of my day because I know that when I spend time in the word, when I spend time in that silent meditative like prayer and all of that, the rest of my day just seems so much brighter. Again, giving me that positive implementation of thoughts and feelings that I can take away the negative things with. Number three. So the third thing that I like to do is to take on positive affirmation. So this is different than telling yourself positive things. I feel like it, it can be completely separate. So like the positive thing, um, positive thoughts thing is like throughout the day. Like when I'm doing something, you know, around lunchtime and these th thoughts pop into my head, then I stop and and implement positive thoughts, put positive thoughts into my head. So the difference between that and the affirmations is I think about things for that really kind of get to me sometimes and I turn that into a positive thing. And so these are things that I tell myself on a daily basis. So it might be in your silent meditation, it might be, um, 
in a, in a journal, it might just be something that you wake up and before you even open your eyes in bed in the morning, think about these things that you think to yourself. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be healthy. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to love myself and things like that. So positive affirmations, pick like five, five affirmations that you think that really resonate with you. So what do you struggle with? What are the things that you struggle with? How people see you, how you feel about yourself, take those things and turn them into a positive affirmation. I'm really big on um, like the, the law of attraction, you know? So if you think about a yellow car, you're gonna see 15 yellow cars today. I feel that same way about our thoughts and our thought process and all of that. If you were to think negative thoughts about yourself all day, then you're going to feel negative. You're gonna start associating them with who you are and then you're just gonna be miserable. So I like to do it the opposite way with the affirmations and positive thoughts. You know, if you're constantly showering yourself with these, I deserve to be loved, I deserve to be happy, then you're gonna find that that positivity is what you find. Water. Number four, make a plan for the day. Okay, so I work from home and ever since I started having kids, I've been a stay at home mom. So, I mean, I've, I have worked part time here and there and I do have a part time job now, but it wasn't always like that and I would think like even though I was doing like all the mom things, you know, changing diapers, cooking food, cleaning the house, doing those things, teaching ABCs and, and writing and was all that fun and good, wonderful things that I was doing as a mom, I would wake up in the morning, do all the mom things and then come home and then not come home. I was already home. So then I would go through all the mom things and by the end of the day I was like, well, what really did I accomplish? I had a to-do list. I didn't do the to-do list, you know, because the babies were crying or I took them to the park or things like that. So my thing is here to set goals, things that you want to do each day and to make sure that they're kind of small goals, not like really huge goals, but kind of small goals, and maybe just like one or two or two or three, depending on what your home situation is like and if you have a full-time job or not. Because even if you're working all day, I'm sure that you could you know, think to yourself, I have a goal to do X, Y, and Z today to get these things accomplished. And doing these things, like make my bed first thing in the morning. That is one of the things that I do I try to do every single morning because it does, it really makes you feel like, okay, I did that, now what else can I do for the day? So setting those small intentional goals and having that plan for each day is um, very important to like having that a good mental health because when we accomplish things, we feel better about ourselves. We feel more capable and that's just a really good feeling. Another example would be for like when my husband, because my husband works outside of the home. He is the he is the breadwinner. He goes out, but he gets home in the in the afternoon. And if we don't have a plan of what we want to do, we're kind of like, oh, well, what do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. What do you want to do? Kind of thing. So we try to make a plan for when he's home from work. What are we going to do? Okay, we're going to eat dinner. Then do we want to take the kids out maybe for a walk or go for a hike or do we want to go work out or sit on the couch and read books tonight. So we try to make that our plan in the beginning so that we're not kind of just floundering and getting flustered in the evening. My next tip would be to slow down. I know like when we think about goals and things and accomplishing things, we want to fill our to-do list and be go, 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 that constant like forward movement. But when we're so bogged down by things that we have to do, we kind of stall instead of having that forward movement. So just to know that it's okay to be slow and it's okay, like if you 
aren't pro if you have your priorities and somebody you know maybe asks you to do something or whatever you don't have to do everything anybody everybody asks you to do that it's okay to say no sometimes it's okay to be like you know I'm just a little bit too busy for this right now but we can revisit the issue at another time it's okay to take that that's I believe a form of self-care you know to not be such a people pleaser and overdoer and overachiever because you just lead to burnout so quickly when we're constantly just trying to get things done so taking it slow knowing how to write out your schedule so things aren't so overloaded but you still feel like you're accomplishing things okay Next is to pick a hobby and especially if you're so busy like doing all the things on the to-do list, um, working from home, having a full-time job, you know, we're always so busy. What are you doing with your free time? So yeah, we're having our plans for each day and we have the things that we need to get done, but what are you doing for you in your free time? I recommend finding a hobby, something that you really enjoy doing, but something that is separate for you, not necessarily like, oh, I'm gonna do this with my husband or I'm gonna do this with my, my friend over here, but something that is solely yours that you can kind of like baby and nourish. So a good example of this would be to find a yoga class, you know, one that you can go to at the same time, same day, every week, like clockwork um, to be able to know that's something that you're looking forward to, something that you enjoy, something that you're doing for your body, and this is also beneficial to mental health too as well. Yoga instructor, love it. Um, but yoga is a really good choice. I like to do like cell phone photography, and this might sound a little bit silly, and especially if you um, either don't take pictures or if you're a photographer with like fancy cameras and stuff which I also love a ton um but like with my phone um there's the the camera on the iPhones um is so good so when I'm taking pictures whether it's of my kids or like pretty flowers or nature or nature or whatever you know um that, that cell phone photography, you know, I had to buy another piece of equipment for it, but that's something that you can do, you know, download little apps and do like the editing, play around with them, really get to know like what that's all about. And I feel like having like that research, okay, what kind of apps do I want to use? How do I take like a really good picture in nature or stuff like that? That's something that also is all yours, something that you can enjoy all on your own. Um, Maybe you can have like a Facebook like little photo album where you put all of your pictures that you take, you know, or you can have like, I know there, I, I don't know what the company is called, but there are like, there's this one app that you can get where um, you just kind of in the iPhone, you can heart or like favorite the pictures and have photo books made from that like separate favorite photo album. So that could be a thing where you can make your own photo books with pictures that you've taken. That's a really cool hobby. Reading. Reading is a really great hobby. I read all the time. And I don't just read um, for pleasure. I mean, every kind of reading for me is pleasurable because I really like to read. But I read a lot of, like, let me show you. This book right here, Gut, you know, because I like to learn about like the microflora and stuff. I've got my um, Kindle. What is this? Is it a Kindle? Yes, it is. It's a Kindle paper white that I like to download books onto. Um, so, or like I really enjoy Stephen King and reading books like that too. So again, just picking something like that that you really enjoy to do. And then the last thing that I... Um, thought people would enjoy because I enjoy it is journaling. So journaling, it can be a really fun hobby, right? Like maybe, maybe you can discover in yourself, like the desire to write short stories. Um, that's really fun. I, I enjoy that. Um, but going on walks, things like that. So just making sure that you are doing something that's just for you. And then 
This is the kicker here. This one's really important to me is having a bedtime routine because nothing, well, I can't say nothing, but sleep deprivation or not getting quality sleep is real can be really really detrimental to your mental health i speak from experience not just myself but people around me have have had a experience excuse me have had experience with a hard time sleeping and has definitely had a negative impact on their mental health so whatever it is that you need to do make a like a regular bedtime i don't ever hardly hardly ever i can't I really hate using like that, um, like definitive, like those, like I never do this because you know what, sometimes I do stay up past 10 o'clock, but I regret it the next day. So at my 10 o'clock is my bedtime. I try not to go to sleep too early or any later than that because I can kind of mess up your sleep cycles. Um, do whatever it is before that time, whether that helps to calm you down, like have a cup of tea. Um, reading the book, um, bath time, you can use essential oils like lavender and stuff for like aromatherapy is really nice, but to really make sure that you're establishing a bedtime routine is really important because when we're sleeping, that's when like our brains and our bodies are doing all of the hard work that we need to process like the day that already happened and prepare yourself for what's gonna come the next day. So again, just making sure that you're sleeping really well and if you aren't sleeping well, like some people don't think, some people are like, yeah, I get four hours of sleep at night, you know, and I feel great, but I'm really pissed off all the time or I'm really sad all the time and I just can't figure it out, um, but might not associate poor sleep with mental health. So if this is something that you struggle with, I highly suggest you speak with your doctor um, and talk about like maybe what are some things you can do to sleep better. Um, there are things that my husband and I do. He, he likes to listen to, I, I believe it's an app that he has. Um, don't know what it is, but there's definitely, there's apps out there that can help you fall asleep. You like throw your earbuds in and they play. Like I think his plays music, like some kind of special music or something that helps him fall asleep and things like that. All right, so don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, let me know what is the thing that you want to implement down into your life to help boost your mental well-being comment down below let me know what it is i'm super curious give this video some likes and also don't forget to subscribe